All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice coming good and clear. Please inform me if you have any difficulty. Please don't forget after we finish this video to download it as soon as it is ready for download. Today we are going to expose this sneaky man who is a very, very, very easy to get him busted. But this guy, he is very specialist, like Shabir Ali. You know, they beat, they beat people who do not speak Arabic, do not know anything about Islam. And when I debate somebody who know nothing about Islam, I can say whatever I want. I can present Islam to you as a watermelon. And this is exactly what this guy, he do. So let us not to waste time and let us expose this liar. Now, uh, uh, the gentleman, the Christian gentleman who is in this uh, video, if anyone, he can contact him so he can get my books and he can watch my videos. So next time he go there, he can spank them himself. Listen carefully how they lie. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was also given to all of them. When it comes to Jesus, the Quran says in chapter 3, verse number 51. In Arabic, it says, In Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum fa'budu, haza sirata mustaqim. The translation is, so Jesus is quoted in the Quran, and God is saying about Jesus, that verily Allah is my Lord and your Lord. Worship him alone, and that is the straight path. First of all, there is nowhere in the Quran the word Jesus is ever mentioned. Muslims, they follow a guy, his name is Isa. And not even a single Muslim, he can explain to us where Isa is coming from. So this is number one lie. Why you are saying Jesus when the Quran is saying Isa? Then you need to explain to the Christians who is Isa. And I will tell you who is Isa. Isa supposedly is the brother, uh, sorry, he is the son of Maryam, the sister of Aaron which is the sister of Moses. So your stupid prophet, he thought that Mary, she is the sister of Moses. She have a son, his name is Isa, and that is Jesus. So you are talking about the wrong person. You are false person like you're a prophet. You do not know what are you talking about. If we go in the Quran, we will find the following. Let us start busting right away with no mercy. When the Quran says, Ya Ukhta Harun, when a Jewish guy, his name is Kabul Ahbar, he came to Aisha and he said to her, but this is cannot be true, you know, because there is, a, there is hundreds of years between uh, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, <laughs> and, uh, and Aaron. Uh, and then Muhammad, he found out. So he said, oh, at that time, they used to, to, to call them by, the, by their great uh, ancestors or their prophets. But as you know, that Moses and uh, Aaron, they are not from, even from the same tribe of Mary. So they have nothing really to do with her. Same time, the, the verse in the Quran is so clear, sister of Aaron. What is the name of the chapter? Chapter number three, the one who mentioned it. He said chapter number three. Chapter number three is Alu Amran. Who is Amran? He is the father of Moses. Who is who is Amran? He is the father of Moses. And what father of who too? He is the same father of Mary. If you read the Quran, chapter three, you will see how stupid this Quran is. So they give you a false introduction about somebody, his name is Jesus. In the Quran, he said this, Jesus does not exist in your Quran. Why are you lying? Where, which verse in the Quran, we can find the correct name of Jesus, which is Yeshua. You have a guy, his name is Isa. Where do you get this Isa from? Nobody have any idea, but we do. So you fabricate and you say to us stories which does not exist. Let us continue. Number one line. Don't say ever again Jesus said in the Quran. Say Isa. And there's a huge difference. And then when it comes to Muhammad, peace be upon him, God also re uh, revealed the Quran, which we consider as the last and the final book, right? Quran. And, and there are many passages in the Quran that speaks about the oneness of God. One of them is uh, chapter 112. So the translation is, God is saying, verily, Allah or God is one God. Big fat lie. That, that verse doesn't say Allah is one. Uh, that verse saying that Allah, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Allahu samad. Say Allah is one of. In Arabic, there is the word wahid. And there is the word ahad. If you type the word Ahad in the Quran, you will find it all over the Quran. And you will see that always this word in the Quran mean one of, never mean one. 
وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ Chapter 4, verse 102. Chapter 2, verse 136. وَلَا نُفَرِّقَ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ And we do not differentiate between any of them. Which, by the way, a contradiction. Because this verse is saying that Allah, He sent messenger, and He don't differentiate between any of them. But different verses are saying it clearly that there is a prophet who they are elevated upon other prophets. So this is a stupid statement from Muhammad. So what you see here, the word Ahad, never meant in Arabic language one it means one off actually if you say Qul hu Allahu ahad, and you stop that is a mistake because you have to tell us now ahad what because it's mean one off one of what this is why you see in the Quran Allah he said that if he want to have a wife or a son or a son he is going to take it from ourself uh, <clears throat> Let us open the verse. Okay. You see here, uh, uh, here when when uh, when we talk, we speak with reference with the proofs. We don't do the the garbage they do. All right. For them, they give speeches and they quote verses from the Quran. The funny, they say to you, don't, uh, uh, don't misquote. Don't. It's, they are the one who play games. When Allah He says, if He want to take a wife or a son, He will take it from ourself. How Allah can take it from ourself unless there is some He is like Allah. If Allah is one, you see the Muslim they say that Allah when he speak about himself he speak in a pearl name because he is majestic like a king which is very silly to say but as you see here in this verse it is so clear if we intended to take a woman for fun pastime i.e. a wife or a son we could surely take it from our from us okay listen carefully Allah is thinking about taking a wife if the word us mean Allah, that's mean Allah is going to have sex with himself. Are we clear? Does it say if Allah want to take a wife, he will take it from ourself? So how Allah will take it from ourself unless there is ourself? So you have to take one of two. Either Allah is one or Allah is one of many. And this verse is so clear that Allah is one of many. And he is saying, you know what, if I want to get married or have a wife, actually in Arabic, it, is, it doesn't even say a wife. It says, lahwan. Lahwan, it's a woman for fun, a concert, a playboy girl, a hooker. This is how Allah, he respect women. So, and if you go and read the interpretation, you will see, the interpretation of the Muslims agree that this is about if Allah want to take a wife, he will take her from the women who Allah, he created in the heaven. But those how they are from us. How a woman she is created by him, she is from us. That's impossible. So this tafsir is funny, but it is exposing again the stupidity of the Quran maker. I'm trying to open the website of the tafsir, see if we can open it. This website never open usually when we need it. Yeah, it's not opening. So those people, they lie to you. They speak too much about the oneness of God, but their God is not, there is no oneness in Islam. The God of Islam, the only one God in Islam is Muhammad. Allah is just a toy in the hand of Muhammad to use him to get his authority because he's a man, how he can claim authority. So I claim that I am sent by someone. His name is Allah. He is big God and I am his messenger, but Allah, he gave me the authority. And there is no authority over the authority of Muhammad. To the point, if Muhammad says something and Allah says something, the Muslim they follow Muhammad. As an example, the Quran say you do mata, which is a shamely behavior and teaching and ethic of someone claiming they claim they claim that they have the same religion of Abraham. They claim that they have the same religion of of Musa. But Musa says, if you commit adultery, we stone you. Muhammad is asking Muslim to rent women for one night or two nights to stand and pay them if they take off their panties. And you are telling us we have the same belief. And this is in the Quran, chapter 4, verse 24. Let us continue with this idiot. 
every single actually if i want to talk about every single lie he said i'm going to spend until tomorrow but i will try to make it shorter as much as i can he is eternal <coughs> he's needed by all he begets not nor his begotten and there is none like unto god okay hold on there is nothing like allah but all of us renew that this is a verse in the in the bible it says nothing like god this is nothing new you are copying but no there is someone like allah it's obvious let us expose this liar isn't it allah through his prophet muhammad said to you that allah look like jesus and he looked like adam let us see this one <clears throat> Muhammad is so worried that his followers, they are going to worship a man, think that he is Allah. Who is this man? He is the false messiah. The Muslim in Arabic, they call him a Dajjal. Read carefully. The Prophet said, I have told you so much about the Dajjal, between two brackets, the Antichrist. But by the way, this is false translation. Muslims do not believe Antichrist. They believe in the false Christ. That I am afraid you might not understand that the false Christ is short, hinted, Woolly uh, uh, haired, one eyed and eye sightless, and neither protruding nor deep seated. And if you are confused about him, know that your Lord is not one eyed. But you just said to us, no one like Allah. So why Muhammad is so worried that you Muslim, you would think that this guy who is a man, you would think that he's Allah. In the same time, look what happened. The Muslim, they will think the false Messiah is Allah. Not anyone. A person who claimed to be the Messiah, they will think he is Allah. So here this Muhammad, he, he made it so clear that the Messiah is God. But this is a false God. Do you see it? The Messiah is God. This is why there's a guy, he will come. His name is at Dajjal. Dajjal means the liar. The Messiah, the liar. That's what Dajjal means. al Messiah Dajjal. So the Messiah, the liar, he will come and he will do things nobody can do. Why? Because simply he claimed to be the Messiah and the Messiah, he can do things only God can do. So Muhammad saying, and he is worried, you might think that this is Allah. You should know that Allah is not one eye. So the difference only between Allah and this man who is a full man is just one eye. Do you see it? So when a Muslim, they say to us, Allah is not a man, that's a lie. And this hadith is sahih. They can't play the game and say, oh, this hadith is rejected. Oh, I wouldn't accept it. It is 100% authentic, as you see. Sahih in Arabic means authentic. One million percent. In different hadith, Muhammad, he copied from the book of Genesis. <clears throat> from the Bible, sorry, I mean. Uh, and, and from the book of Genesis and, and from other pages in the, in the Bible too. Oh. he said that he created Adam in his image <clears throat> but this is exactly what the Bible said Allah created Adam in his image you see the word they put the word picture but this is what the Bible says Muhammad he added he is 60 cubit tall, 30 meter height, and uh, you know, read the rest of the stupidity. So they lie when they say that Allah is unlike anyone, but if Allah is unlike anyone in the way that he is uh, uh, not a human, that's a mistake because obviously the Quran confirmed that Allah have a hand, Allah have a face, Allah have five fingers, Allah have a foot, Allah have uh, 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 eyes, and we just showed you Allah is, Allah is not two eyes. Allah don't uh, Allah have two eyes, but uh, not like the false Messiah who have uh, one defect in one eye. Let us continue with this potato. And look, he have a board and supposedly, and they put the camera and they invite this Christian guy so they can make a story of it. You know, they are preparing themselves for this. So let us see what will happen. Really simple. Really so simple. sometimes the youth, the Muslim youth, or the Christian youth, or other youth, or other people, they may ask me or Abdul Qadir the question. 
if Islam is the one and the only faith, then where did other faiths came about? So we believe that if God would have revealed all the faiths, then God would be a God of contradiction. God is not going to say to one set of people, it's okay to worship idols. To the second set of people, it's okay to worship humans. To the third set of people, you know, that's wrong, but only worship one God. If the same God would have re uh, revealed these contradictory messages, humanity would be confused. Exactly. So how you're a prophet, he said, if you touch a black stone, that will erase your sin. You see, later he will start talking about how uh, 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 worshiping idols start. And he say, and this is how Hindu they came. But you are an idol worshiper. When you claim that touching a black stone, that will erase your sin, you are an idol worshiper. For a stone is a stone. This is what, you call, what your prophet said. And your prophet kiss a stone, and you kiss a stone, and when you go to Hajj, you kiss a stone, and you lick it. And yet you, you talk about the, the you talk about about the, uh, pagans, and idol worship. This is your prophet saying, a person he said to another Muslim, why I see you only touching those two corners? Which corners? The black stone corner and the Yemeni corner. Yemeni corner is called this way because supposedly it is facing Yemen and it have rocks brought from the temple of Al Maqa, which is the moon god temple in in, in, in Yemen. Why I do you do only touching those two corners? He said, I heard the message of Allah saying, touching them erase sin. So who is the pagan? Not only that, your prophet claim in different hadith that the black stone is going to come in the judgment day is going to have eyes and ears and is going to witness for you, which means the, the, the stone which you are kissing. <laughs> It says it is the assistant of Allah. Actually, in one of the hadith says that the black stone is the right hand of Allah on earth. It is the right hand of Allah on earth. So look how they fabricate and they lie. They claim that they are not pagans and they don't worship stones. But the fact they are people who pray in direction of a stone. They kiss a stone. They believe touching a stone will erase their sin. And they lick the stone. And yet they say we have nothing to do with the stones. But do you see how we got them busted? Continue, your brother. So we say God from the beginning only <coughs> sent and revealed one consistent ideology, one faith. And we say that faith is submission to one God, which is? First of all, you will not find one single verse in the Quran speaking about submission to God. This is a big fat lie. The Quran never spoke about submission i will let him finish and we will get him busted islam quickly how did other faiths came about oh some people so this is the timeline and this is also the right path the path of submission to god hmm. which is islam so we say that some people they moved away from the oneness of God and they started to worship idols like you because in stones. That's how we say the faith of Hinduism came about hmm. all right worshiping of idols some people they started to worship the Sun you know the Sun in the moon today is cloudy but Sun the moon hmm. you see some people they start worshiping the Sun and the moon but look at this idiot the Quran says that Abraham he worshiped the moon and he worshiped the Sun let us get this idiot busted. Chapter 6, verse number 78. According to Islam, Abraham is a moon and sun worshipper. Read carefully. This is about Abraham. And this is how we we show we show Abraham uh, Abraham the kingdom of the heaven. Suddenly he speak about Abraham. How? Why? We don't know. Then he says, when the night covered him over his head, dark, uh, uh, over uh, with darkness, he saw a star, and he said, "This is my God. This is my God." So he worshipped stars. Then Abraham he changed the religion. He saw the moon. When he saw the moon rising up, he said, this is my Lord. And when the moon set, he says, I don't like the walls who disappear. 
and then he saw the sun. So when he saw the sun rising, he said, this is my Lord. Actually, he did not say only this is my Lord. He said, this is Akbar. And this is where the word Allah Akbar came from. Allah is the moon God. Akbar is the sun God. And Muhammad merged them together to make unification of one God. And that is the oneness of Islam. The moon God and the, the sun God became united. This is my Lord. This is Akbar. Who is Akbar for Abraham? Is the sun. This idiot he just said to us, that some people they start worshiping the sun and the moon those people according to islam is abraham potato so that's how the faith of atheism came about not atheism 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 you know you know you know you, you are you are a tz person atheism this is how it came so abraham was atheism but abraham was a muslim hmm. Abraham was atheism. Some people they started to worship. Actually, they took away the concept of God and they only retained certain rituals. That's how the faith of Buddhism came about, right? Buddha. So the one who follow ritual, he is a Buddha. But isn't you Muslims, you go between a Safa and al Maro, which is a statues of a man and a woman who have sex in the Kaaba, and supposedly God he cursed them and he made them idols. Aren't you Muslims who practice rituals or going around the Kaaba seven times, bowing in the front of the Kaaba? Aren't you Muslims who practice rituals of repeating words and supposedly if you repeat them, that will forgive your sin? Isn't it your prophet? He recite the Quran, which is about blowing the knot to stop the envy, and he, he and then he blow from his breath in his hand, and then he wipe his hand in his body to stop the envy for him. And you are talking about rituals. When Islam, all of it is about rituals. Nothing spiritual. Nothing is a spiritual in Islam. Hajj is a mess. You have to do. You have to visit the Hajj. Prayer is a must. This is a ritual. When you make it a must, it is ritual. As long as it's not a choice, it's a must. It's it's ritual. When you kiss a stone, this is a ritual. And when you follow a prophet, you don't know why he is doing that. If we ask this guy, why your prophet kissed a stone? You, you they don't know i asked them once in a chat a muslim website they said to me because the stone is holy i said why the stone is holy they said because the prophet kiss it i said why the prophet kiss it he said because it's, because it's holy let us continue with this liar and then we say that some people they elevated a person a creation of god a prophet a messenger to be son of god and divine equal to God and we say that's how the faith of Christianity was created let me show that this guy is a big fat liar and he did not know his religion or his fabricating answers according to Quran Christians are people who will go to heaven if a Christianity is something fabricated so why the Quran says the following If a Christianity is a name does not exist because then we should have we should be called Muslims. Allah He never called us Muslims, He called us Nasara. He never called the Jews Muslims, He called them Jews and the Quran in front of you. And those who He called them Jews and Christians, they will go to heaven, as you see, chapter 2, verse number 62. Verily, those who believe, believe in what? Believe in supposedly in God, and those who the, the Muslims. And those who they are Jews, who are the Jews? Those who they are the people of Moses, the people of uh, the children of Isaac and Jacob, and those who they are Christians. The Quran did not say the word the, the Nasara is created by the Christians. There is no Nasara. Because this guy is saying that Christianity is something that exists. There's, there's only one faith, it's called Islam. But as you see, the Quran itself calling us Christians. And by the way, there's a quote that, to be honest here, the Quran is not saying the word the Christian, never say Christian, say Nasara. For the full Muhammad, he thought that the Nasara are the Christians. And the Nasara are the same as Jehovah's Witnesses. They are Christian called the other Christians. But look what happened in this verse. Muhammad is promising the Muslims, the Jews, the Christians, and the Sabi and to go to heaven. But who is the one who is Sabi and those are worship stars? How the Sabian will go to heaven? Uh, 
Any anyway, Muslim can tell me? At that moment, Muhammad was weak and he's trying to collect anyone like Muhammad. This is how it is. Muhammad, he just opened a channel in YouTube. He want anyone to subscribe. Anyone, he say anything, he agree with him. Please, yeah, subscribe. You are, you are right. You are right. I agree with you. Subscribe. Oh, you are a Christian. You will go to heaven. Subscribe. Oh, you are a Jew. You will go to heaven. Subscribe. Oh, you are a Hindu. You will go to heaven. Subscribe. Oh, you worship stars. You are Sabian. Okay. So, uh, hit the bomb. Give us a like and subscribe. I agree with you. You will go to heaven. This is Muhammad. Because Muhammad, he said this sentence in his time. This is not about the Christian in the past. He was saying those who they are now, who they are Jews, or they are Nasara, or they are worshiping stars, the Sabia, and they will go to heaven. How those who worship the stars, they will go to heaven. Let us go with the lie of Muhammad and saying that Christians and Jews and Muslims, they have one God. How we have one God, but yet the Sabia and they are joining us in this religion. Sabi and worship stars. And Abraham was one of them. And the Quran is saying that. So Abraham was lost when he was worshiping stars. And then you promise those who worship stars to go to heaven? <laughs> what a potato. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So all of these faiths, we say that they are man-made faiths. They are deviations from the one right faith. God yeah. appointed prophets and messengers to bring these people back again. So yeah. you can save them and yeah. they can go to paradise. So mm. that was the mission of all the prophets and messengers. Mm. Uh, I can give you some quick references, then I will wrap up. So it says about all the prophets coming with that same message chapter number 16 verse number 36 that god has appointed messengers and prophets and warners to all the people and all the nations of the past and there okay let us take you accountable for what you said i want you to name for me the messenger for the hindus because you just mentioned the hindus right india have more than 400 languages can you name for us one messenger sent by allah to the indian Especially the Quran says we never send a messenger to people unless he is from the people speaking the tongue of the people. Big mouth, you say nothing. You are a potato and I challenge you to debate me. But I challenged you before and you are a coward, potato. We send not a messenger except with the language of his people in order to might to he might make it clear. So David cannot be the messenger for the Hindus, based on this verse. For David don't speak their language. There's 400 languages in India. Which means, if Allah want to send Muslim messengers to India alone, he need to send to India alone 400 messenger in 400 languages. Can you name one for me? You cannot, because you are following a false cult. Big mouth, you say nothing again. And Allah never send a messenger, a messenger unless he speak the language of the people, which means Muhammad can be a messenger for you because you are maybe Bangladesh or Indian. So Muhammad cannot be your messenger too. For Muhammad, he is not from your people. He doesn't speak the language. And the Quran say clearly why? In order to make it clear, which means if it's not in your language, you will not get the message of Allah clear. Unless you want to say to me, Allah is stupid. He does not know what he's talking about. And you are smarter. Do you see it? This is how easy to get this liar busted. I mean, I, do I have to stop every second and get you busted? I mean, my hand is, if my hand is red, how about your bum? What is the color now? I mean, I cannot even let you speak for two seconds without, without busting you. Can't you make it like even for a minute without spank? I mean, come on, give me a break. I'm not going to keep spanking you non-stop. My hand hurting. Your message was to invite humanity to huh? the worship of one God. Uh -huh. When it comes to Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, the Quran says, chapter 42, verse number 13. Hmm. Same message, same main ideology given to you, Muhammad, peace be upon him, was given to all of them. Okay, same message. Okay, if we have same message, then how Muhammad he make verses saying any woman she want to give her a private part for me so I can F her. Is that the message was given to Abraham? Abraham because he have a wife she is very old 
and he is dying desperate to get a child he did marry his own servant and we knew what happened this was not even the order of god one woman and the reason is not to sleep with the women the reason is because he wouldn't have children so how you can have the same message if you are a prophet is a fornicator a rapist a criminal and he break the command all the command of god which is given to abraham and to moses and to anyone you're a prophet he went to his own son wife and he flirted with the women saying to her praise be to allah the one who made my heart flip for you is that the command of the god of abraham that you go and flirt with the women who is married to someone else and she is married to your son and then the filthy muhammad in order to get the women he claimed that allah told him why why you are hiding what is in your heart for this woman but the woman is married You fear what people will say about you that you married your own son. Go and have her, man. <laughs> Allah will give her to you in marriage. I mean, have you ever heard of a God like this? The woman, she is married to his own son. And then after Muhammad, he flirted with the women, according to the Muslim, not to me. And I can share the reference. Each time the husband, he tried to sleep with this woman. Allah, he make the penis of the husband swell. For sure your penis will swell because now she is the woman of Muhammad. Thank God I am not married and I am not exist in the time of Muhammad because if Muhammad like my wife, Allah will make my penis swell. This is the message of Abraham. This is the message of Moses that you go on a flirt with women she is married and then your God, he encouraged you to take her because he promised you to have her and the God do not rebuke you for a flirting with her when she is married. When the Bible says, if you look at the women, you, 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 know, you, you commit sin, just looking at her, you wish her. And this is the wife of your son. And you are telling me we have the same message, you idiot liar. Let us continue. When it comes to Abraham, chapter 3, verse number 67 says that Abraham was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he was a Hanif, he was a Muslim. He had or oh, hold on. Like My mistake, I, I pushed that. The, uh, what, what minute we were? Guys, Abraham was Hanif. This is another stupid mistake in the Quran because Hanif means Kafir. Hanif means a bad person. A person who deny God. So the stupid Muhammad, he learned the word in, Ar in, in Aramaic. He do not know what Hanif mean. Hanif mean you are a bad person who deny God. How Abraham can be Hanif, your donkey? You just said that Abraham is a bad person. And you just said he's a Muslim. Abraham was Hanif. He was a Muslim. Okay, thank you very much. Hanif mean Kafir. Hanif means somebody worship wrong God. Bible says that when Abraham had to worship God and bow down before God, he used to bow down to only one singular entity. Hmm. Example, Genesis chapter 6, 17, verse number 3. Hmm. All right. Also, when it comes to Moses, he was an absolute monotheist person. In the very first commandment in Exodus chapter 20, verse number 3. Exodus chapter 20 verse number 3 says that you should not take any other God besides me. Miss God is saying that. Absolute oneness. Again Moses mentioned, so this is also mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse number 6. Exactly the same, the Ten Commandments. People ask Moses the question about God. So he mentioned again in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse number 4 he said, here, O Israel, the Lord our God is only one, right? Not multiple, not any combination, but one as in mathematical one. One as a mathematical one. Did you hear it? 
one as a mathematical one. Let us get this guy busted. You are mentioning the book of Genesis. You are a certified donkey like your prophet. This is the book of Genesis. You will see in the book of Genesis immediately it says that God and his spirit is above the water. So if you are saying to me mathematically, this is two. Aren't you the person of mathematically? Well, God and his spirit, do you, does it say that? So why you mention Genesis, you liar, if you don't believe in Genesis? Claiming that Genesis never mentioned that God is one, but yet he is. God the Father, God the Spirit, God the Son. Why you mention it if you don't believe in it? This is the first page in the Bible. In the beginning, God, actually even here, by the way, the word God is a plural name. It's not just one God, one God God's Elohim. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So why are you lying? <laughs> you see, they memorized some verses from the Bible and supposedly they became expert. I'm going to teach you now with the Bible, and the Bible teach that God is one in, in, in mathematic way. Mathematic way, why? But is he a solid a piece of wood? What do you mean mathematic, mathematic one? Is God is a piece of wood? So we say piece no, wood number two, wood number two, two uh, uh, number three, or uh, one number one? Continue your lies. When it comes to Jesus, interestingly, it's important. In the Gospel of Mark, the second Gospel, chapter number 12, verse number 28, a person came to Jesus and asked him a million dollar question that of all the commandments, and the Jewish people used to have 613 commandments. And this person wanted to know. I will, I will, I will repeat this one. Which Hold one on. is the first? The, is the question about God. So he mentioned again in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 6, verse number 4, he said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is only one. Because I, I forgot to cover this one. You see, the Muslims, they copy this one from the Bible and they put it in the Quran. Do you remember when he said, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad? Qul huwa Allahu Ahad is exactly this verse. O Israel, your God is a Khad. This is where Ahad came from. Echad is not one. Echad is a word mean a unity. This is why the Bible says that the man, he get married and he leave his family and they be, he became Echad with his wife. You can go right now and you search the word Echad in the Bible and you will see that this is about even about a human being, two human being getting married. They became Echad. So it's not one as number. It's about unity and this is how we get them busted again this is why i played again because i forgot to, to to cover this one and look how they put their finger up they are giving finger to, to their god they love to give finger to their god the only one who give fingers to their god is the muslims right not multiple not any combination but one as we don't have multiple you liar we have one god and keep your finger up to allah as in mathematical one when it comes to Jesus, interestingly, it's important. In the Gospel of Mark, the second Gospel, chapter number 12, verse number 28, a person came to Jesus and asked him a million dollar question that of all the commandments, and the Jewish people used to have 613 commandments. And this person wanted to know, of all the commandments, which one is the first, the greatest of all the commandments? And Jesus, as a prophet of God, he replied in Mark chapter 12, verse number 29, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one. Worship him, right? Not worship me, not worship some other entity. Worship him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that is the first commandment, he said, right? Allah 
and let us let us show everybody that you are a scumbag like you're a prophet as long you are a person who believe what is written in the book in the bible of mark chapter number 12 why you don't mention what jesus says in the same chapter verse number 35 You see the cowards? They try to fool you. They quote a verse from a chapter, quote the chapter so everybody will laugh at you. Where it says it clearly that the Messiah is the Lord of David. The, who is the Messiah? He is the Lord of David. So they quote as they wish, so they can find a stupid fish. This is the same chapter he just quote for us. And Jesus answered and said, He taught in the temple how say a scribe that Christ is the son of David. So Jesus saying to them, How you say that? Uh, let me let me get you the the page exactly. Hold on. <laughs> The same chapter he chose is the same chapter proving to us that Jesus is God. Remember, he is the one who chose it, it's not me. So he is the one who put himself in the trouble. Look what the Bible says. First of all, you will see that the word in the Bible appear. You will see here there's nowhere in the Quran mentioning the word Jehovah. Why is Jehovah isn't appearing? We don't see Jehovah in the, in the Quran, not even once. Read carefully. This is the command he read for us. This is one was the presence of the Lord Jehovah, and he is wonderful in our eyes. But he didn't say this is Allah. And then when you go down, we will find the Messiah is asking them, what do you see about what, what do you say about the Messiah? What do you say about the Messiah? Who is the Messiah? Read carefully. Uh, he said to them, how are the scribes saying the Messiah is the son of David? He said to them, who is the Messiah? They said, the son of David. He said, okay, how you say he's son of David? For David himself said in his spirit of holiness, the Lord Jehovah said to my Lord, sit in my right until I constitute your enemy as foot is still under your feet. So the Lord said to my Lord, who is the first Lord? Who is the second Lord? Mr. Abdul. We have one Lord. That is God the Father, God the Son. He's talking about the Messiah. He's saying to them, if the Messiah is the son of David, then how David call him my Lord, my God. David therefore called him my Lord. And how is he his son? And the holy crowd was listening to him with the pleasure. So do you see how we get them busted? You quote for me that you have to obey and the command of your God to worship your God. But he is saying to them that I am the God of David in the same chapter. Never let a foolish Abdul explain to you the Bible. They don't even understand their own cult, how they can understand you, you know, your belief, how they can explain your belief. Coward liars. Continue, Abdul. Aligning himself with the rest of the prophets. But as some people moved away from that first commandment and formed their own faiths, God then brought and appointed his last and the final prophet. And last but not the least, anyone who believes in all the prophets, worships only one God, follows the books the original way that they were given to those prophets, not the current diluted versions. Guys, the one who followed the original way, look at the stupidity. Okay, where is the original Bible, brother? <laughs> okay, I'm a Christian. I want to follow a prophet. His name is Isa. Do you have the original book, brother?
Do you see the stupidity? And not only that, he is saying the original one. The Quran confirmed that the one we have in our hand is the original. Let me let us get you busted. I mean, my hand is hurting my my friends from spanking you. Shame on you. Chapter two, verse number eighty-nine. It says, مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَهُمْ And when they receive a book from Allah confirming what is with them. So you liar, you say that the Bible is not the Bible, but the Quran saying it is the Bible because Allah is saying it's confirming what is with them. And what is with them? This is your Muslim translation, the Torah and the Gospel, Batayta. If I am a Muslim, I will give you a certification of a certified donkey. But I understand you are trying to deceive a Christian. So you are going to add all the spices in the world you want. So they can taste the food. They will taste only the spice. You see, cheaters in India, Bangladesh, who make food, food in order not to taste that the food is old, it's not fresh, it's cooked five days ago, they add a lot of spice so your tongue will be burning and you will feel nothing even if the food is made from garbage the more spice we add the more they will not notice that this food is not good for eating and this is what this guy is doing if you are saying that we if we follow the true book and the true book is corrupt well that's mean your quran is a stupid and your god allah is a stupid and not only that, all of us, we knew that Muhammad, not only he said in that Quran, in the Quran once, he said that many times. But look, Muhammad in the Hadith, he swear by the Torah, said, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. This is Sunan Abi Dawood and this is a Sahih Hadith. Where Muhammad, he asked the Jews to bring the Torah. He would draw the cushion from under his knee, from under, from under him. And he placed the Torah in the top of it saying, I believe in thee and him who revealed thee. So you're a prophet swore, swore in the Torah, which the Jews they have right now. Can you find me in the name of Allah in that Torah? You cannot. Do you see how we get them busted? Continue, Abdul. And then follow as a guidance the last book, the Quran, and the example of Muhammad, peace be upon him. The example of Muhammad. I want to follow the example of Muhammad. If I follow the example of Muhammad, I will be arrested the same second I arrive to, to New York airport, for I will be accused of a child molestation child pornography and racism and rape and killing follow the prophet muhammad as the best example how i will go to the wife of my not my son and i will flirt with his wife and i will say to her my heart is beating for you that is the example of muhammad we have to follow i will follow the example of muhammad i will order muslim women to give their boobs to any foreign man who is adult so they can suckle her. I will follow the example of Muhammad by asking the Muslims if a man and a woman they like to have boom boom for three days, three nights, do it. And if you like to extend it, extend it. Hmm? Is that the example of Muhammad you want me to follow? The teacher of fornication. The messenger of Allah said, if a man and a woman agree to marry temporarily between two brackets, and the hadith doesn't say marry, it says Aishara, sex, boom, boom, liars, why you are adding the word marry? Their Aishara, which means their boom, boom, should last for three nights. Have you heard, did you hear Musa saying you can have a woman for three nights only? 
and you have to pay her for taking off her panty and you are lying to the Christian saying we have the same message and we have to follow the best example Muhammad the man who married six years old girl in fact she was five years old according to the Islamic calendar because six years in our calendar is four five years in their calendar the man who flirt with his own son and then he take the wife of his son the man who rape women the man who break the command of God having sex with his servant when Allah allow him only to rape women who captured them from from war as an example he have sex with Mary the cook and she is just a servant the best example the best example for Muslims is somebody was accused by the Muslim that he stole a panty and then Allah he sent the verse saying the Prophet did not take the panty and by the way until now we do not know who took the panty and this is the best example have you ever heard of a Prophet of God and his disciple accusing him of stealing a bra the best example is him and his followers obviously they are a bunch of garbage because they are fighting over a piece of a clothing I mean, aren't you ashamed even to say that your prophet took it? And this piece of clothing, by the way, it is stolen, which means this is the booty. They, they, killed the, they, they killed the Arab, they stole their goods, they, they, they attacked the caravan, they are pirate. The same as, as uh, what is named the part of the Caribbean. Huh? Exactly the same, they are pirate. They attacked the caravan and now they are fighting over the booty. And now they are fighting, there is a piece of underwear is missing. Who took it? The prophet took it. And then Allah, Sherlock Holmes, he decided to involve and prove that Muhammad did not take it. And actually this verse is proving to us that Muhammad is the thief. Anyone knows why? Because the verse does not say who is the one who took it. The verse says it's not Muhammad who took it. So here there is something very clear. If Allah is God and the one who made this verse, he should say, go to this guy. He is the one who have it. Remember, the one is talking is Allah. It's not enough to say it is not Muhammad. You have to declare his rep reputation that he is not a thief. So what the verse is saying, it's not Muhammad. It's not for Muhammad to steal the clothes, brother. But okay, who is the one who took it? Allah don't know. So Allah Sherlock Holmes proved that Muhammad must be the thief because he could not point his finger about the real thief. If there is someone else, not Muhammad is the one who took the panty, then Allah shall say, go to this house of this guy and you will find the panty there. But this is Muhammad who took it, obviously. So brother, we have to follow the steps of a prophet Muhammad, who said any Muslim woman, she want to give herself to the prophet and take her panty to do jihad, brother. Have you ever heard of a prophet making verses claiming that God, told him that any Muslim woman she like to sleep with him she is welcome what does have to do with God huh okay you want to worship one God but what does have to do with God what women taking off their panty opening their legs for Muhammad have to do with worshiping one God and Muhammad have many wives already and look at the first translation any believing women she offer herself to the prophet and the prophet wishes to marry her where is the word marry her it says yes thank you ha -ha, which means to f her and look brother the prophet he never asked for anything for himself it's a privilege for him only privilege for muhammad to get the best of the booty privilege for muhammad to take the fifth of the booty privilege to muhammad to have sex with any women without payment for free Privilege for Muhammad, any woman, she can offer herself and the Prophet, go, okay, go to the bedroom, take off your panty. There's no need for marriage. It's a privilege. All the privilege of Muhammad is about his penis and his pocket. Don't ask me about the Bible for now. We are spanking this guy. Some people, they are suffering from flight of thoughts. Don't you see what we are doing? Continue, brother. Okay, we need to follow the Prophet Muhammad, brother. I'm going to follow him. Islam says that through God's mercy, 
those people would go to paradise. Remember carefully, he just said, Islam said that through God mercy, those people will go to heaven to paradise. Through God mercy, okay. All right, so the Quran says in chapter two, verse number 25, anyone who has the right belief means only worshiping one God, no humans, no idols, no creation, but only worshiping one God and doing good deeds as being brought by uh, in the Quran and through Muhammad, peace be upon him, his example. God has promised paradise for those individuals, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Listen carefully, guaranteed. But this is not what Quran is saying and not what Muhammad is saying. This guy is a fraud. Let us spank him again. I mean, okay, I will change my hand because I, my, my, my right hand is hurting from spanking you. You filthy coward, you are a liar. Where do you get the word guaranteed? Read carefully what your prophet said. This is a Sahih Hadith. And the Muslim, they lie in the translation. There is none among you who is his deed. There is no alone. Alone is not existing in Arabic. Here we go. The Hadith in Arabic. Those who Muslims who speak Arabic, they know what I'm saying. There is no alone. Not a single one of you, his deed will save him. They say to him, so the word alone here is a fabrication and translation. Take it off. None of amongst you who him is deed would attain him salvation. They said, the companions, they said to him, messenger, not even you. He said, not even I. But that Allah warps me in mercy and he grant me his burden. However, this is, can be busted in the Quran. If we go in the Quran, we will find that Muhammad saying, that Allah is saying that may Allah forgive your sin. So the forgiveness of Muhammad is not guaranteed. That Allah more may forgive your sin, who? Muhammad. In the past and in the future. And here, obviously, this verse made by Muhammad, the fabricator, because he is saying he's, he's asking Allah. Uh, uh, praying to him to forgive his sin. This is why Muhammad he asked the Muslim to pray on him so he might go to heaven. Do you remember the debate between Mimi and uh, David about pray for him? He prayed for not to? <laughs> okay, the Muslim they pray for Muhammad, not to Muhammad. They pray for Muhammad to do what? To go to heaven. <laughs> So if Muhammad going to heaven guaranteed, he do not need anyone to pray for him anyway. In the same time, here the Christians, when the guy, he sat down, he got him busted. He said something to him very important. Listen carefully. I did not watch the whole debate, actually. I just get the, the, the point where this Christian, he, and the rest, I'm just uh, reviewing it now for, uh, would you like, I, I, I went through, but I did not watch the video. So I heard what this Christian, he said to him, and you see, you will see what will happen. No ifs and buts, right? Guaranteed by God's mercy. But then God... Guaranteed by God's mercy. Do you see it? Guaranteed by God's mercy. God says on the flip side of it, you know, just like when we went to schools and colleges, if we don't obey the professor, the attendance policy, the participation, the assignments, the quizzes, the finals, there would be consequences. Even the places where we work, there are consequences if we don't obey the policies. So... If people, they worship someone else instead of God or along with God, and they die like that, obviously there would be consequences. So why the Quran says that the Sabi and they will go to heaven, and the Jews will go to heaven, and the Nasara will go to heaven, and those are in the time of Muhammad, and they did not accept Muhammad. And let us focus on the Sabi. How the Sabi who worship stars can be qualified to go to heaven. Chapter 2, verse number 62. At this stage, Muhammad, he was a scam as usual, but he was weak and he is trying to get anyone to believe in him. So he promised the Sabi and they will go, the Christian will go, the Jews will go. Don't worry, don't worry, I'm not against you. All of you will go to heaven. 
Do you see it? Christianity. Oh, sorry. I, you see, I had the, 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 man, let me move it. Where we stopped. Where this guy stopped, what, what the moment was. Yes. Again, Moses mentioned, so this is oh, that see. first commandment. Okay. Abdul Qadir or any Muslim. Living in my Islamic worldview. I heard what you said. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, questions that come up in my mind is, uh, well, first of all, you said it's because of God's mercy that people can be saved. So my understanding is that uh, when a Muslim is on their deathbed, they maybe have done a lot of good things, whatever good is, mm -hmm. but they have no assurance of salvation because in your words, Allah will do whatever Allah is going to do. You have no assurance. Even if you've done fantastic, good things, helping people. Guys, I want you to focus on this. This guy, he killed the debate. This Christian who do not know anything about Islam, he just destroyed everything this guy he said. And I will prove it. Listen carefully. He said to him, so okay, a Muslim he is in his, his his deathbed, and after all the good he did, whatever that good is, he have no guarantee he will go to heaven because it's in the hand of mercy and the mercy of Allah. I want you to listen it again because this is very important. In your words, Allah will do whatever Allah is going to do. You have no assurance. Even Allah will do what whatever He have. To do you have no assurance i will prove that what this christian he said please if anyone knows this christian send him my video please if anyone know him i don't know who's he because i will give him now a great weapon to prove what he the point he mentioned which is very powerful and then the muslim just start to cover it but we will see in a second that the christian he got them busted with no mercy listen carefully They maybe have done a lot of good things, whatever good is, <clears throat> but they have no assurance of salvation because, in your words, Allah will do whatever Allah is going to do. You have no assurance. Even if you've done fantastic good things, helping people that are destitute or whatever, that you have no assurance, as opposed to the God of Christianity, he has extended mercy and grace to everyone. And if they reach out and accept it by believing in him, that they will get that gift of grace. Well, uh, so well, it's before you conclude that point, uh, 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 it's important uh, uh, I mentioned over here, the word guaranteed is there, Gu guarantee. If a person has the right belief and doing good deeds, God mentions in the Quran that he guarantees those people eternal paradise and let us get this guy busted he is dead and now we are going to put the last nail in his ass oh, oh sorry in his co uh, coffin let us read what muhammad said and muhammad will spank you with no mercy you coward liar you just said it's guaranteed right okay this is what muhammad said read carefully i'm going to put it in the screen <clears throat> <laughs> Guaranteed, huh? What a potato you are. What a son of Muta you are. The Prophet said, Who said that? The Prophet, not the guy coming from Bangladesh. Not the brother of the The Prophet, Allah, he guaranteed us. We are going to go to heaven. And Allah will give us a lot of women. And you will come in faith in the Ditko. Uh, Zaka, we will go where? I'm going to go to the Ditko. Uh, you mean the disco exactly let us see how we get him busted the guy is a big fat liar he said it's guaranteed this is muhammad obviously muhammad is a scumbag you do not know what he's talking about he should go and join the school of this Bangladesh guy he should learn islam from him muhammad obviously is the prophet this guy is the prophet the prophet of allah said allah pray on him and salute him says allah says i am just as my slave think i am i.e the able blah 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 uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, 
let, let me, I want to I wanna quote a different one actually. Hold on. Here we go. This, this is the one I want to quote. Because this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Because they would say, hey, this is weak. This is, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, potato. Hadith number 6594. All right? Read carefully. Guaranteed, huh? Guaranteed you're a liar. Guaranteed you're son of Muta. Read carefully. Muhammad said, he's swearing by Allah and by Allah. A person among you or a man may do the deeds of people of fire till there is only one cupid or an arm breathe distance between him and fire. So this guy is doing what? He is doing the act of hellfire. He's a bad Muslim. He have a Christian friends. He don't go to jihad killing Christians or Jews or Hindus. He don't rape women. He's, he's a bad Muslim. But then that is written, which Allah has ordered the angels to write, proceed, and he does the deeds of the people of paradise, and then he entered. You coward, you said the one who do good deeds. As you see, this guy, he never had nothing to do with the good deeds. It is the deed of Allah, which Allah, he forced to happen, will take over, and then he will go to, to heaven. And then Muhammad, he continues saying, the opposite direction, and a man may do the deeds of people of paradise till there is only one cupid or two between him and paradise. And then the written proceed and he does the deeds of people of fire and he enter it. So what guarantee you liar are saying to us? You are doing the, the deeds of paradise all your life. And then what Allah wrote for you and your destiny will take over, which means it's not what do you do, it's the destiny. Do you see it, guys? It is not what you do, it is the destiny what Allah wrote for you. And Muhammad, he gave us an example, two opposite direction. One was doing the deed of fire, of hell. This guy, he go to heaven because what Allah wrote for him will take over. Let us show you different translation. So Muslim will not say we are making things up. Read carefully. This is Sahih Muslim, and this is again Sahih. Hadith number 2643, authentic, number A. Muhammad said, By him beside him whom there is no God, that one among you, you act like the people of deserving paradise, until between him and paradise there is remain but the distance of a cubit, almost there. And when suddenly the written destiny overcome him, and he began to act like the people of hell, and he entered hell. Do you see it? So this Sabil is not only a fraud, he is fabricating Islam. Do we need to prove more that those people are a fraud? He said it's guaranteed. He said whoever of you do good deed, the Quran says so, you go to heaven. No, the, what, what Islam teach that what Allah write as destiny is the reason for you to go to heaven, not your deeds. And the proof in front of you. A person who is doing the deed of paradise. What, 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 what? Read carefully. By him beside whom there is no God. That one among you act like the people of deserving paradise. Enter between him and paradise. There is remain. But the distance of a cubit. You can find that in the same hadith. Go up. And the creation of a baby, by the way, in Islam is the most funny, adorable, cute creation. The God of Islam considered that the sperm stay inside the woman for 40 days. And then after that, the, the, the sperm will become a congealed blood. And after that will become a flesh. And after that, all of this for 40 days, total is 120 days. And then after that became a lump. And then after that, Allah, he sent an angel. And the angel, he start writing the deeds, which mean the fate. So the angel write down his de his lifehood, his death, and his deeds. So the deed of a Muslim is not a deed of a Muslim. It's Allah destiny. Do you see it? And what Allah write for him before he created him is going to take over. So this guy is nothing but a fraud. And look, he says at the end that this Christian, he left. I mean, for sure he will leave because you are a bunch of coward liars. 
and for sure he will leave this is not his place he is coming into your mosque what do you want him to stay until, until tomorrow one hour and a half or one hour sitting with you is it enough there's no point you are a liar he got you busted so if you are a person you know this person this Christian this gentleman this brother God bless him send him this video and he can study all the reference we gave him and he can make a video about it so he can expose I want him him to make a video about this scumbag his name is Sabil Ahmed and the reason I call him a scumbag why because he is not being truthful nothing he made in this video is truthful you see I'm not against you okay you believe in your religion no problem but at least be truthful say what you believe in don't fabricate a religion that exists why they lie in order to win a debate you think you won the debate you lost anyone who will watch this video will die laughing i show the reference i should approve and i show what your prophet said not what i said nothing i said is mine okay sam give me a second <clears throat> well sam if you know him please contact him and let him watch this video uh, <clears throat> Give me a second to log in my Skype. All right, Sam, let me see, where are you? All right. <coughs> hey, Sam, how are you? Yes, brother. Let me just uh, mute you here. Yes, say, hey, brother, how are you? I'm, I'm, thank you, Lord. I'm great as God. He gave us all the great to deal and our needs. Hallelujah. Just to let you know, I already sent him your link. I think he's watching. Oh, okay. That's wonderful. Uh, if, if, he's, uh, if, if he's watching, I say to you, thank you. And before next time you go and get those people busted, we better learn more about their cult and prepare because they are like wolves who they are willing to make all kind of lies in order to deceive. You see, yeah. debate with liars is not a debate. Debate should be happening between two decent people who say what they believe. Correct, Sam? 100%. So when, 100%. You, when you debate a liar, you're, debating, you're not debating him. You're playing a game with him. He's going to play all the games you can imagine in the book of Satan in order to make a point against you, which means it's not a debate. It's just a game to make themselves they have truth and you have nothing yeah just to give you background he was set up actually and this man i know him i won't mention where but he's a good man he loves jesus he has a heart to reach muslims i've actually been to his church <clears throat> what happened was he saw a billboard gain peace hmm. he saw a billboard yeah about islam so he went met the person this person told him okay let's meet and talk over coffee and because of i guess the coronavirus something they didn't meet but then he said okay why don't you come here to their mosque yeah and i have a friend that wants to talk to you so mm -hmm. and then he called me about two weeks ago i said look i'm not there i don't live there anymore i can't come but they were going to talk about the paraclete they had agreed they're going to talk about whether the holy spirit is muhammad or jesus for, and John, sure, for, you know? for sure muhammad is the holy spirit isn't it holy <laughs> He's a drop in harness. Muhammad, when he walk in the street, holy come from his pocket, from his head, from his nose. He's holy for sure. <laughs> yeah, but they set him up because. Yeah, yeah, and we know them. We, we know how they are. We know how they are. Yeah, but then he gets worse. He comes in, and there's Sabil Ahmed with a camera. Yeah, this That's is why I'm saying it's, it's a setup. They have a camera in order yeah. to make it to to make it. You see, they they are looking for uh, uh, like. Uh, publicity they are they are trying to use him yes exactly and and, and, and and this is why those people you have to be careful with them you know yeah. why you have a camera for a person you just invited to have a coffee with why you have a yeah. camera you know so set up 
Okay. So I told him, you're, I'm gonna send you, look how God works, look how amazing God is. I saw your video, and I know Sabil from the neighborhood, because Sabil moderated my debate with Shabir, I know him. Mm. He works with, he works with uh, the Dean Show, yeah. the, the Dean Show. Uh -huh. So <laughs> I saw the picture, and then I looked and I saw my friend. And so I called him, and he said, oh, the Muslim sent me the link today, Sunday, right before you called me. I said, see, God is trying to get your attention. So he got the link from the Muslim, and then I saw you, and I said, you're going to have to listen to Christian Prince. You're going to have to learn how to debate them. And I even said it to him, I go, the way American evangelicals debate, that's not how you debate Muslims. Exactly. You're going to watch him, learn from him. This is how it works. So he said, send me the link. I sent him the link, an email. He may be listening now. I'll ask him an email whether I can give you his email, maybe you can talk to him and share material with him because he has a heart to reach Muslims. No problem. He can watch my video. The best way is to reach my videos and to read my books. But yes. always uh, tell him, please, if he is listening, I'm not sure, that no. when you debate Muslims, you are not debating. They are playing games. 100%. You see, the father of all lies is the devil, and this is their father. 100%. Keep up the great work. He's watching you because he asked me for the link. I'm sure he's here. Uh, but, you know, anyway, if not, he knows where to find you. But keep it up, CP, and glory to Jesus Christ for you. May he preserve you. Thank you, son. Thank you. God bless, my God bless friend. Thank you for your call. Thank you. Take care. You see, as I said, that they think they are making victory by this recording. But the fact they did the opposite. Because now they got my attention and we got them busted. And now they, they this is, will be horrible. I want every single Christian here. I want you to promise me to download this video. Post it everywhere you can. Let everybody see how they lie. How they even go against their God teaching, against their prophet teaching. They fabricate things that not exist in their religion. Just in order to make a point and to get publicity in a debate. They got a guy, they invite him for coffee, but it was a trap. They want to use him for their publicity. So they can make themselves like they are heroes in the front of Muslims. And here we go, a Christian, he leaves. So what if he left? You want to stay there forever? He's a person coming. He is, look, look how brave he is, how sure he is from his faith. He is coming to you. And you could not convince him. So why he want to stay? Actually, the Bible says, if somebody don't make in fun of your Bible and, and the jewels of God, clean the dust of your sandal from their, from their dirt. So you should be happy that a Christian, he came to a mosque preaching the devil teaching that if you kill, you go to heaven. And if you go to heaven, there's women, they have no panties. And those women, you can see the bones of the, uh, the marrow of their bones. And those women, they are always horny. And those boys are going to serve us in heaven. And those boys are so white. Too bad. You are from Bangladesh. You cannot get that job, actually, to, to work as a waiter in the heaven of Allah. For God of Islam is racist. He hire only white waiters. Have you ever heard of such a garbage? We have the same God, the same. Okay, if we have the same God, how come we don't have the same heaven? Did the heaven of Musa promise us boys who they are white? Huh? Brother? Did the God of Musa promise us women we will see the marrow of their bones because they are so white? Did the God of Musa promise us endless penis? One mile women but did the God of Moses promise us in heaven we will have women with big boobs? Mr. Booby? The liar, they say to us, we have one God. We don't. Their God is the devil. How you know the devil? From their fruit you shall know them. What kind of God? Imagine I go to your house and say, I want you to believe in my God. Okay, well, tell me about your God. My God, he give you women with big boobs. Hey, really? Can you describe for me how they look like a brother? Okay, let me explain to you, brother. My God, his name is Allah. 
and he will give us women with big boob. A brother, it doesn't look like a boob, it looks like cookies. A brother, this is a nipple, they are big, big nipples. And they are two, not only one. Actually, somebody says to me, they are seven boobs. A brother, why? She is a dog? Uh, no, brother, but she is like an extra. Have you ever heard of a God? He promised such a promise. So they say to us, our God, he teach us good ethic. Our God, the Quran is holy. You know, the, this, is, this is the holy Quran. If this is the Holy Quran, what is the dirty Quran is? And look, every Muslim translation, they play with the translation. I mean, every translation is different. Depends what you what you read. And look, the Holy Allah, what he said to us. Even he described to us the women private part. I don't want to say the word vagina because I'm shy to say it. Did I say it? Oops. Have you ever heard of a God? He described for us what is inside the vagina of the women who Allah will give to us. Brother, do you have a picture, brother? This is the holy God you are. We have, we Muslims, we have the same message of Abraham, the same message of Moses. The same message of Noah. What's the same message? What is that? Where is the same message? And not only that, each time you do boom boom with those women, Allah will make them virgin again, which is a cheating. I mean, the women, she just have a flat tire. Fixing it will not make it the tire new. Like, hello? Each time you sleep with her, Allah will make her a virgin. Even the promise is sick. Why Allah enjoy women having pain, losing their virginity again and again? Just because the Arab guy, he would like to fool himself. I'm sleeping with the virgin. Brother, but you slept with her five minutes ago. Yes, but she is virgin now again, brother. I like virgins. I mean, do you see the stupidity? You just step with the women. And Allah will make her virgin again. Hello? I am Allah. Allah, how are you? Uh, I notice you have a concern about the women you sleep with. Yes, Allah. They lost their virginity. You told us they are virgin. Don't worry. Give me five minutes. I'm going to make them virgin again. Are you sure, Allah? Please. Please, I cannot wait. I will make them virgin. And if you don't believe me, you can put shampoo, shampoo, not shampoo, shampoo in the bathtub and then force them to jump in it. If the bubbles come out, that means they are not virgins. If there's no bubbles, it means they are virgins. Oh, Allah, thank you very much. This is exactly what I do when I fix my bicycle tire. <laughs> I, I fix it, I put the glue, and then I put it in the water, and I put shampoo, and then if there's bubbles come out, that means it's uh, not virgin tire. I mean, have you ever heard of a God like this? Now, how many of you will copy the video? Give me one if you promise to copy the video and download it. <coughs> How many of you? I want to see this video all over. I want this guy to be the joke of everybody he tried to convince on Islam. So everybody will see that those guys are a bunch of liars and they are a fraud. And I challenge this idiot if he dare, if he dare, as long as you are welcoming Christian to the mosque, don't welcome me to the mosque, welcome me to Skype. If you dare to speak to me in Skype life and get as many viewers as you want, and I will make you the version of Allah. And each time you lose your virginity after debate with me, I will fix you and I will make you virgin again. And I will make you lose virginity. And then I will make you virgin again. And then I will make you lose virginity. And then I will get the shampoo to test it. 
Do you dare? Coward. Coward, liar, you have no shame. Worshipping the God of the private part. Even the black stone of your prophet which he kissed is in the shape of a vagina. And actually it is the God of fertility stone. And the Arab, before Muhammad, they used to worship stones. And Muhammad, he followed the air steps. Look what the Hadith says. This is what the Arab used to do. We used to worship stones. And when we found a better stone, then we throw the first one. And we take the better one. But if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some dirt and mix it with sheep milk and do perform tawaf. Do you see, guys, the word tawaf? People, do you see the word tawaf? This is exactly what the Muslim do around the Kaaba. Tawaf is going around the Kaaba. This is a pagan practice exists before Islam worshiping rocks. Muhammad, he accept the same religion he added to his religion. Tawaf. Going around the stone. And the Muslim, they go around the black stone. I remember Muhammad, he said, that the black stone erase your sin. If you touch it, two corners in the Kaaba. If you touch them, they erase your sin. I remember that Muhammad said too, in the top of that, that not only they erase your sin, the black stone one day is going to come in the judgment day and is going to witness for the Muslims, and it is the right hand of Allah. The hadith I'm quoting right now, I'll post the link for you. Anyway, this video will not stay here for long. Please download it, share it with your friends, post it everywhere, and let us see how many really Christians here, how many truthful people there is, for there is many. They say, Lord, Lord, but the Lord, he will say to them, not everyone say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter my kingdom, but the one who do his will. And the one who do his will is the one who fight the father of all lies, the devil. If you are not willing to join the fight against the devil, you are no Christian. You do not know Christ. You don't belong to him. You are just Christian by name. You have no fruits. If posting a video is a hard job for you, so what is job is for a Christian then? We are not asking you to go and do missionary in Africa. We are not asking you to go and do missionary in Afghanistan. We are asking you to post a video. Can't you do it? Help us so we can help those who they can be deceived. The purpose of those videos, those Muslims, they are making to deceive as many they can. It's a snake act. It is the snake coming to the house of Adam and Eve. And that house can be yours. And your sons can be deceived. For you refuse to fight the devil. And we are here to help you. I am the last one will be infected with this cult. I am the last one Muslim, they can lie to me. I do not need to spend my time to do how many hours today I'm just doing what I'm doing. I mean, just today, in the last 24 hours. Five times, four, I mean, I don't know, eight, 10 hours. I am the last one will be infected by this cult, but yet, why I'm so passionate to fight it, but you people don't help? Please, it is your fight. Let us save the Muslims. We love them. We don't hate them. The word we say it is a word of anger against deception, not against a human being. We don't hate the Muslims, and we will never hate them. Even though the religion teach hate. The coward, he says to us, we have the same message, but the Quran says Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christians. Specifically, Jesus says, love your enemy. How we have the same message? How we have the same message and you have a God who targeted the Christians and he is the devil promising to spread hatred and enmity between them and each other. 
This is why the Muslims, they get excited when they see two Christians arguing and fighting each other because they believe that this is the promise of Allah, which is the devil, that he will divide the Christian and he will conquer them. And from those who call themselves Christians, we took their confidence, but they have abandoned the good part of the message. So we planted amongst them enmity and hatred until the day of the resurrection. While Jesus said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy, which means the one who hate each other, I'm coming to help them so they can love each other. Allah do the opposite, for he is the devil. This is the proof that this is the devil. We have a guy, his name is Muhammad Ansari. Mr. Muhammad, do you like to call me Muhammad Ansari? Do you like to call me, my friend? Mayday, mayday, Muhammad Ansari is wanted. Do you like to call me Muhammad Ansari or you are a text terrorist? Do you have the courage, Muhammad Ansari, to call me? The second we mention their name, they hide. They take a hike. Oh, he mentioned my name. I'm not going to move. Did he see me? When I leave, he start posting in the chat and he will start posting in the comment. Christian Prince, I challenge you. The second Christian Prince says to him, do you dare to call me? Eh, he's dead. What happened to you, Muhammad Ansari? Where you go? Did you take the sleeping bell? Oh, it must be the effect of the camel urine. Thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. Please don't forget to download. And today we made a video actually in the other account, which is the quality of life. If you like to go and watch it, so you can uh, see some of uh, what we do there. You know, you are more welcome to join us and subscribe. And again, my major channel is Arabian Prophet. Here we use this one or other ones as a backup channel when we are going to use Muslim videos, which is usually don't live for long, for the Muslims are terrified from what we say. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord protect you from Corona evil, from Quran evil, from the virus of Muhammad, which is more harmful than any virus in the world. When a human being believes that killing a human being will take him to heaven, this is the biggest virus. When a human being believes that hating others, it is the biggest virus. When a human believes that he can have sex with the children, that is the most sick virus. When a human believes that God is going to take the sin of the Muslims and he will place it on the Christians and the Jews and the Hindus, this is the sick of justice. That is the sick God. His name is Allah. When there's a God, he promised you that there is a heaven full of boys and they will serve you for eternity and they will not bleed and they are white like pearl. That is sick, racist, garbage, child abuse, even in heaven, slavery, even in heaven. When there's a God, he promised you women to be sex toys. That is disgusting, disrespect for your mother, my mother, disrespect for your daughter, disrespect for your wife, how you accept such a false teaching. Women are not sex toys. Women are not for sex that is a shame how dare you even to follow such a shameful god when a god he says beat your wife if you beat a dog you go to jail in america which means in america dogs have more right than muslim women and then the muslim they say to you oh no you have wrong understanding. We beat them with toothbrush. Toothbrush, you liar. I can show you the hadith where the man he did beat his wife until her skin became a greener than her clothes. And Muhammad never said a word to the man. In the top, he gave him a verse saying, Beat them. In other hadith, he says, And no man should be questioned for beating his wife why he did beat her and this is sahih al-bukhari as you see the woman she got beaten until her clothes 
became a greener than her her skin became a greener than her clothes and Aisha she said describing how green it is she said Aisha she said that the lady wearing a green veil and complained to her about her husband and she showed her a green spot in her skin caused by the beating it was the habit of the ladies to support each other it's a habit you know that woman stupid woman you know they support each other about that you see you see how they try to make women low do you see how they try to make it low it's the habit of the women not because she is not because this is right it's a habit of the women support each other you know women are meh, disgusting cult so when Allah messenger came Aisha said I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman Aisha first hand witness saying Muslim women is the most women they suffer which means she is comparing them to who to non-believing women Christian women Jewish women Arab women the most suffering women are Muslim women and the one who said that Aisha and Aisha she continues saying look look at her skin a greener than her clothes what Muhammad did he took the side of the man and he told the man the women oh if you are refusing to sleep with your husband you should know you cannot go back to the previous husband unless he tastes your juice until unless what unless he tastes your juice have you ever heard of a filthy man he say to a respected woman that you cannot go back to your previous husband until this man he rape you and he tastes your juice remember the fight is she don't want to sleep with him muhammad make it clear you cannot get back to him unless he tastes your juice and the muslim they translate that until he tastes your sweetness and he and you taste his sweetness sweetness your liar sweetness your liar if we go right now to the arabic dictionary we will see that the word hasila is orgasm this is the word in arabic do you see it Sahih Hadith. What the word Asira mean? Let me open a dictionary. You see, I, I was supposed to go to leave soon, huh? I mean, I believe it. This Christian prince, that's it. When he starts something, you cannot stop him. Unbelievable. Let us see what the word Asila mean. Because they will know they say it doesn't mean that CP. It doesn't mean that CP, you know. <laughs> All right, this is the dictionary. This is the Muslim dictionary. This is not, I have nothing to do with it. It's in the front of you in the screen. Orgasm. Al Asila. Orgasm. Oh, my screen is not on. Sorry. You see, I put the word in the search engine Asila. What the dictionary gave me? Orgasm. This is Islam. Thank you everybody for being here. May the Lord bless you. The Lord is our provider. The Lord is our master and he is the only master. There is no master for us as a Christian beside the Messiah. There's no rabbi, there's no teacher, there's no man can teach us but the Lord himself. Never listen to the fool, for the fool, he is a fool himself. So how you listen to him? Ask yourself a very simple question. Can't it be that there's a God, if we believe in him, he promised me sexual promises, why? Is he a pimp? Jesus said, the Messiah, our Lord, said, from their fruits you shall know them. Look at the fruits of Muhammad. Disgusting. Look at the promises of Allah. Disgusting. Imagine you have a birthday party for your child, and then somebody come and he give him a porn movie. That is God's gift. Porn movie? Or this is a pimp gift. Your gift is a message about who you are.
when somebody give you a gift he's giving you a message when somebody he is coming to you with the book this is a message to you this is what he like this is what he is about when a person he come to you with porn this is his message to you when a person he come to you with money this is what he like the Bible says that the man treasure heart is where his treasure is so if the treasure of Allah is a penis and vagina this is who is Allah he is the God of vagina thank you very much may the Lord protect you and keep you safe from every cult from every Quran virus coronavirus from all the viruses in the earth in God we trust in him we believe and God the uh, they expose the lies of Muhammad and learn how to be tough on this cult and tough mean to be bold to say it as it is not as they want not politically correct being politically, politically correct is an illness is a weakness is somebody He's hiding something. He's been forced to say something. So if you are a Christian, say things as it is. Yes, we love the Muslims. It doesn't mean we will let the Muslim die and go to hell. Loving the Muslims is saving the Muslims. It's not the opposite. So when somebody he says to you, uh, that you are being rude, this is not how a Christian should be speaking. A true Christian is the one who say things as it is, and that will make it truth for sure.